live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Veritas Vision 2017. Brought to you by Veritas. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're covering Veritas Vision 2017. Veritas, the tagline here is truth and information. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm here with Stu Miniman. And we're very excited to have Tom Schaffstall here, who's the um, storage network analyst at Exelon uh, Energy Company. And uh, we love, Tom, having practitioners on because we get the truth. So welcome, good to have you. Thanks, good to be here. So set it up for us, your role, and we'll start with Exelon. Tell us about the, the, you know, your interest in energy and what you guys are doing, and of course your role at the company. Um, we are a utility company that uh, deals with both wind, solar, um, natural gas, and nuclear. Uh, generation. Um, we have multiple, um, Exxon, Exxon has multiple companies that are providing uh, electricity in um, Chicago area, uh, in Philadelphia area, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland. Um, so we are a pretty big company, employee wise. Um, and we have tons and tons of data, and I'm in charge of making sure that that stuff gets backed up and and stored properly. You, you saw the Richard Branson keynote this morning, I, yes, I presume? Yes, I, I enjoyed that, that was very good. It was very good, yeah. and you know, kind of sort of little, providing a little tailwind for much of your business, certainly the wind and, uh, and solar parts of it. Yes. Right? So, okay, let's, uh, let's get into it. Um, so you're looking after that, that portion of the infrastructure, maybe paint a picture for us uh, as to sort of what it looks like in your environment, the applications that you're supporting, and, and actually, you know what, let me check that. Before we get into that, what's happening in your business that is affecting your IT strategy? You hear a lot about digital transformation, uh, obviously cost pressures. What are your priorities from the business and how does it affect IT? Of course there's cost pressures mm -hmm. uh, from the management, um, but we also have, um, we're moving into the cloud as of the last couple of years. Uh, we're also starting to look at um, data center as a service um, for our customers, uh, for the businesses. Um, so I'm involved in several different things in regards to the data center as a service, cloud infrastructure, and managing and monitoring all that stuff. What is that, yeah, data center as a service? Unpack that a little bit for us, um, and the cloud strategy, how, how's, how's that coming about? It's actually yeah. done, been done very well for us. We've uh, gone through a whole uh, set of stages and, and proof of concepts, but we've also worked well with Microsoft Azure, because that's where we're putting all our stuff. Um, and we have uh, a production side, we have a development side, and uh, we also have now a sandbox, which is uh, pretty interesting for testing. So, um, and we're putting all those in together with uh, the infrastructure that we already have in regards to um, making sure things are done properly, uh, the security is done properly, the, uh, ownership of the accounts are done properly. So everything is, is done in a uh, uh, real precise manner through our process. So data center as a service is essentially your hybrid cloud strategy? Yes. Uh, that That's encompasses the public piece, which is Azure, mm -hmm. your private cloud on-prem, on and all the associated corporate edicts and security and compliance, so stuff that goes with that, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And we also have uh, remote sites that we're going to be doing um, we have a lot of uh, energy plants around the country um, that are really small, they don't have a real big pipe, so data center as a service really works for them uh, as well. So that's kind of the things we're starting to look into as well. So part of that is a service catalog, getting that house in order, is that right? And Yes. And, and you do chargebacks or showbacks? Yes, we do. Or you do chargebacks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so. so that's all included in that. Have you always done chargebacks? Um, over the past uh, several years as we've really built it up more and been more precise in our chargeback. I mean, I've always wondered, if, you know, wonder if you could comment from your experiences and your peers. You know, 10 years ago, you would ask folks if they're doing chargebacks, they say, nah, it's just too complicated and you know, we just put it out there. Sometimes we'll do showbacks, but as cloud has come into prominence, mm -hmm. people seem to be doing more and more chargebacks to be more cloud-like uh, and be more precise. Uh, Maybe that's tooling, maybe that's culture. What, what's your experience been? Um, yeah, we actually started doing uh, more and more reporting on our uh, uh, physical and virtual environments. Um, 
about two years before we actually started into the Azure Cloud. Uh -huh. um, and I think that was in preparation for that because they saw that that kind of uh, technology was already there in the cloud and we wanted to be prepared for that and make sure that um, the accounting side of things was a little bit more precise in, in, in what we were doing uh -huh. in, in charge of that. Okay, so let's get into our too. Yeah, right. can, can, can you maybe sketch out for us a little bit, you know, how, how much data is your engineering team cover, you know, how many sites, you know, what, what's, what's kind of okay. the, the purview and how do we get a, kind, of, kind of give us this thumbnail sketch? Um, we have um, three main data centers right now um, in Chicago uh, and in uh, the Baltimore area. Um, currently we're taking one of those data centers and consolidating into the sister data center which is about 20 miles away from each other. Um, so we're dwindling it down. Um, and our utilities, uh, for instance, are, are managing their own data centers as well. So we have all, multiple data centers all over the country. Um, and so, um, but we're putting most of our corporate stuff into ma ma two major data centers. So we're in the process of moving those and we have about nine petabytes of data that we're actually backing up and, and managing storage-wise. So um, that's just on the corporate side. That's not on, even on our nuclear side. We have more than and the primary sort of applications that you're supporting, I mean, we don't have to do an application portfolio, we only have 15, 20 <laughs> minutes, but, but generally speaking, maybe talk about some of the, the more critical ones from a backup perspective. Backup perspective, we have uh, just net backup, um, both on the nuclear side and on the corporate side. Um, we are also using Data Insight uh, as well on the corporate side, and we just, I believe, got our nuclear guys interested in the data inside stuff. But, but in terms of the applications that you're, you know, the data that you're protecting, what applications are they supporting, if I could ask it that way? Um, we have uh, HP uh, applications, suites. We have um, RMAN, we uh -huh. have an, uh, Oracle uh, databases, we have SQL databases. Um, and I'm at a loss. Of so a lot of the core, a lot ones. of the core database yes. stuff is, is so pretty high SLA, mm -hmm. um, tight RPO, R RTO requirements on those, or they vary. Do, they vary depending on the um, the categorization of the actual database or the actual application. And how do you deal with the variability of those service level agreements? Um, are you able to provide granular levels of service, or is it kind of one size fits all? Um, we go down to the granular level. Okay. Uh, we don't try to do one size fits all. That just didn't work uh, in, the, in the starting of things when I first started in the company. Um, we saw that they were trying to do that and it just doesn't work. And, and so you predominantly a, or, or exclusively a net backup shop in terms of your data protection, is that right? Or? Yes, yes. We also have um, snap vaulting and stuff with our net apps, our shares. Um, so we are backing those up and, and snapping them off to the other data center and, and vice versa. So mm -hmm. we have that capabilities as well. So you've been at this position for over a decade mm -hmm. and you've sort of seen the sort of the, the end of the client server era, not the end, but the, but the, you know, the tail end of the curve, mm -hmm. internet era, uh, obviously now seeing the cloud, or you, virtualization and then sort of cloud. How has, how have those changes affected your data protection strategy over the years? Um, well, with our virtual side of things, we've actually migrated most of our virtual backups just to VMware. Um, they are actually handling all that within our infrastructure on where we hold all the, the VMware servers. Um, so that's all done outside of NetBackup altogether. We do um, take care of the production side of the VMware uh, servers that we have uh, through NetBackup, and we treat them as physical servers. Mm -hmm but all of our test and dev and all that stuff, that's done and held for 14 days and then it's gone. Okay. For so, uh, all right, so we talked a little bit off camera and you said you were very happy with net backups. So you really mm -hmm. haven't, you know, you haven't, haven't brought in alternatives. What about the product and the company that is appealing to you? There's um, been a history with me because in a previous life, if you want to call it, uh, with my, uh, I was in the financial business, uh, working in the data center, and I had uh, the opportunity to get into the early stages of uh, Veritas NetBackup 4, I think it was. Um, 
And then um, I got out of the financial um, industry and got into the utility industry and it was automatically in that backup and I was familiar with it. It's, it's very easy to use. Um, it's, uh, it's just pretty reliable uh -huh. for restores and all that kind of stuff and management. So, so Tom, one, one of the things we've been poking at uh, this week is, of course, Veritas has a lot of net backup customers. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a loyal one. Uh, talking about this you know, digital transformation and software-defined, multi-cloud, hyperscale world. So some of those things, I think, resonating. What, what are you hearing? What interests you from some of the new products uh, that they're announcing? And you know, how do you see the relevance of what, what Veritas is saying in, in your world? Um, what has interested me so far uh, in our um, sessions and in the, the keynote sessions and all. Um, I'm looking into possibly talking to our architects uh, about uh, InfoMap, um, uh, getting that maybe possibly in the house or and or uh, the data resiliency because um, we're already got most of our stuff in the cloud that we're putting pushing out there. Um, we don't have to push any extra data out there right now. Um, but we may still do that. We may be still migrating some data like for archiving and that kind of thing. Um, that's a possibility. So, but we will probably look to Veritas for that when we go to do those things. So thinking about what you've heard this week, you know, you hear a lot from Veritas about modern data protection, um, cloud, application mobility, things of that nature. As a practitioner, how do you look at those things, those capabilities, are those things that you're, you're, you're considering, actually actively you know, architecting or, 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 or building a plan around? Maybe you could talk about sort of futures a little bit. Um, with our uh, data, we have to make sure um, there's accountability somewhere. Um, we have to make sure that uh, we know who the owners of these things are and we have to coordinate with them in regards to moving anything, of course. Um, and with um, SIP infrastructure and all that kind of stuff for all those regulations, um, we had to make sure that all our data is held properly. Um, and going into the cloud, um, we want to make sure that what we're putting out there is going to be put out there and, and held securely. Um, there's still some trepidation in regards to that. Uh, but I believe our company is moving forward and wanting to do more and get uh, less of a footprint in our data centers for hardware and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, for the governance of this stuff, we, I, we have the Data Insight software out there. It's helping us to um, recognize what kind of files are out there, what, who's using them, who has access to them, um, and we are starting to use that more as well. Uh, we're currently doing a POC to try and uh, get ownership to that actual data, because we really don't other than what Data Insight already gives it. Because this is the number of people that have been using this data, I'm giving you ownership, is yeah. the way it was before. But now we're able to actually classify, this is the owner, He's, he's going to be the one that it, it takes care of that. So. Yeah, T Tom, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, we, we talk a lot about, you know, there's the opportunity of data. Is, is data for, for your business, is it a challenge to keep up with the growth and manage it and, uh, you know, govern it? Or, you know, is, is your business turning that into an opportunity? It's my full-time job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my boss's full-time job to make sure that we have enough room for all the data that we're doing. Yeah. Um, we are trying to do some, um, neat things in regards to managing it better um, and keeping um, data, especially for us, um, our upper management decided to ask us the question recently is, are we doing replication between data centers to keep you know, our DRs and, and all that kind of stuff viable? And we were like, uh, yeah. Good question, we, yeah. And then we started going into that <laughs> perspective and actually got it so that we are and definitely say, yes, we have everything here and here, we are DR safe. Do you test that? Yes. Uh, in fact, we just recently uh, did a, a full test of our um, corporate financial DR data, uh, and it went off without a hitch. Excellent. All right, Tom, um, we'll give you that last word on, on the conference, Veritas Vision. You know, how do you like it? Why do you come to this, this shows like this? You know, what kinds of things do you learn? What, what's of interest to you? What, um, I like to get more information as to what uh, Veritas is offering. 
Uh, they are, they're a very good company. I've had a very good uh, rapport with our salespeople and with uh, the engineers, uh, with the um, help desk people that, that come in and, and, and talk to you and make sure that if, you know, if we're having issues, they're right on. Uh, I've just had a real good experience with Veritas and, and, and the whole realm of things. And things at the show, anything interesting that pops out to you? I mean, things that you've learned, the takeaways? Um, we're looking more now into uh, some of the cloud uh, capabilities that you guys have, um, especially with the resiliency program, with the, um, the info map, and again, with more info, uh, information with the data insight kind of things, all the capabilities they're just going to start bringing out. And just the, the beauty of all that stuff actually working together and being more um, cohesive, because before you had Data Insight, you had InfoMap, you had, and they weren't really communicating properly to, to really help each other report. So that's, it's, it's really good stuff. That's Excellent. Happening. Tom Shaftel, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, you're welcome. Uh, keep it right there, everybody. Uh, Stu and I will be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, the we're live from Veritas Vision 2017. We'll be right back. <laughs>